Tonight we're jumping on some lovely Australian white wine from the Casella family, if I'm rightly thinking. It's Yellowtail's Sauvignon Blanc. On the back it's crispy mm -hmm. and refreshing, bursting with zingy passion fruit and grapefruit flavours. This to me is probably one of the best range of wines um, certainly out there. At six quid, roughly six to eight quid a bottle. Good evening again. At roughly six to eight quid a bottle. Um, I find the whole range so impressive. Um, the goat is Mac. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have not had a single bad. You didn't realise I finished. And even again. <laughs> yeah, I've not had a single bad bottle of any one of these over the years. I've, you know, drank most of them. Um, I've reviewed them all on the channel before. Yeah. There we go. That's better. Can't see my face now. It's awful seeing your face. You know when you're doing a review and then you can see yourself on computer talking. And it's like, whoa. Good evening again. Mr. Harry. Now, when Bolton's back on, this is the man you need to talk to, Mr. Blue Nose Beer Reviews. Obviously, he's a, he's a brewer, so he's got all the gear as well. I don't think he's back on. How much have you been drinking? <laughs> I don't think I look sexy. Ah, you are back on. Yeah, so our good man here, Mr. Blue Nose Beer Reviews, Harry is. Uh, and he also, is, he's got kit at home as well to do beer reviews at home. Uh, not beer reviews, brew beer at home. You know, grain brewing, as far as I know. So, lovely straw coloured pour. Abroad beer reviews. <laughs> and Yellowtail, you know, are exceptional wines. Make no mistake about it. They are exceptional wines. <sighs> Definitely grapefruit straight away on that aroma. And you do get a whiff of passion fruit. It did say passion fruit, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful. I've not had one of these for ages. <laughs> yeah, I'd be worried as well. Although I have brewed, I've brewed a few wines like that. Now, Andrew, won't, you, won't it you brewed the apple and mango, if memory serves me correctly? Good evening. How are you? Um, didn't you brew um, apple and mango juice wine at some stage? I'm sure you did. Remember, I've got sometimes my memory works okay. Then other times the wife tells me something and I'm like, two minutes later, I'm thinking, I ain't got a thought what she just says. Um, Dandelion wine. You know dandelion wine. Um, I've, I've read a gardening magazine about dandelion wine. And it's supposed to be, dandelion is supposed to be really good for you. Orange and mango, that was it. I knew it was something a mango. Uh, no, not, not quite recently. Apple and raspberry cider. Yeah. Yeah. Taraxicum officinale is dandelion, for those who do Latin. And if you don't do Latin, dandelion will do. Dandelion leaves, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> dandelion leaves, 20 demijohns. Wow. Good evening. No, I won't go that far. I've got that pear wine over there. 
and I've only took about three glasses out of it. So there's like 37 pints or 38 pints. And uh, I can't do it. It, it just, it takes, the, it takes the skin off my mouth. So no, not always do I drink everything. Um, but I don't mind. But there's some stuff, you know, you drink it and it's like, oh dear. That Ninkazi the other week, oh dear, that was rough. Elderflower wine, yes, I want to get on the old elderflower wine, to be fair. Yeah, elderflower wine, obviously it's got its own yeast in el elderflower. Cecilis es an auto es canis, is that here? Yeah. <laughs> Your dad's 1984 own brew wheat wine. God, is it still? How do you piss out? <laughs> Good evening, Barry. Oh, someone's all done it. Piss out. That's bad, isn't it? I think all beer reviewers are piss heads, really, aren't we? You know. And if you're not, what are you doing? You should be drinking more. That's the way it is. Dandelion and Murdoch, that's hilarious. But yeah, elderflower wine is nice. You, you go you go you go somewhere wild, pick the elderflowers, wash it all out, uh put it in a in some sort of bag or tights, tie it up, chuck it in the water with sugar, six kilos of sugar, you know, warm water, well, lukewarm water, chuck it in. And uh, within a couple of weeks, you should have. Yeah, elderflower would, would make a fantastic wine. I'm thinking of doing pr a prune and elderflower uh, wine. I did say so earlier, I think. Everything's later this year. We're a month behind. The whole season's a month behind because of this cold weather. Yay, talk about what you like, mate. We all talk about what we like on here, yeah. Just because I'm talking about wine don't mean you have to. Well, you got blackberries. I can't stand them. <laughs> Brambles. Sarsaparilla pop? Your dad used to make. Mm. So, orange juice and mango juice to make orange and mango juice wine. What was your um, ingredients? A couple of cartons of orange or three orange, one mango. Just out of curiosity. Some of this, some of these, um, I'll tell you what, some of these um, wild, wild berries and that make some good wine. You know, you just, you just don't want the ones that some dogs just pissed on. Otherwise it won't taste very nice. For, for elderflower, you don't need any yeast. Elderflower's got its own yeast in it, basically. I chucked yeast in last year. My mate turned around to me and said, don't put any yeast in, you don't need it. It's got, it's basically, it's got its own yeast. And that's that. Yeah. And it and with six kilos of sugar, you can make a good 20%. It basically turns out like a sherry. Starts off, it started off for me, very much like a sherry or a white port. Ah, four orange, three mango. Oh, that's a lot. And four kilos of sugar. Okay. So, uh, base, not far, far from half then. That's interesting. I'm going to do some different ones this year. Yeah. Yeah, and the elderflower, after about six months, it turns into a lovely elderflower champagne. So it's a lovely sparkling champagne. <clears throat> and obviously, cheap as chips. Because all you've got to do is pay for the six kilos of sugar. And um, and that's it. Because you go and take, you get the yeast, you get the elderflower, wash it out, make sure you put it in a bag. Otherwise, you get all these black, little black insects. I washed it out like a twat and I still got the black insects. But you, you know, you filter it anyway. Apple and mango cider. I'd use juice. Use juice, 
couple of bags of sugar, yeast, cider yeast. No, the elders are quite far behind in Nottingham at the moment anyway. Did I steep the elderflower? What do you mean by steep? I obviously didn't. <laughs> I just chucked it in. Do you mean boil it or anything? I think I boiled it when I was trying to get rid of all the insects. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I was doing that, uh, boiling it when I was washing out the insects because it was nasty. All the bugs in my kitchen as well. Ugh, awful. But it did taste great. Boiled bugs, yeah. Yeah, not the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that's the wildlife. Shh, ah, bastard, I'm spilling my fucking wine as well. No, it's in someone messaging. Insects are the next big food source. Fuck that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, you look at that uh, that jungle jobby. Carrot wine, tea wine. Can't fool you there. That's why I, I like juice wine because, you know, for people who are on, who are on a, a very small amount of money, juice wines is very good. Yeah, I'm not even drunk yet. Elderflower champagne, very nice. And very, very strong. I mean, you can use, I did use actually. I put a champagne yeast in with it. And then after I did the champagne yeast, then my mate says to me, you didn't need to put any yeast. And it bubbled away like a sod. If you've ever um, done a wash, and for those people who know, a wash is basically like a, it's like a vodka. And uh, if you've ever done a wash, I think I did chuck some lemons in. Yeah, just just to just to give it a bit of something extra. Or I just use lemon juice. Yeah, stuff that. I've chewed on a few spine um, flies before as I've been working, you know, open your mouth and then but not on purpose. Oh, so you've done it as well, um, Mr. Goathead. I'm just catching up on the comments. There's loads of comments. And I can just see you on about champagne yeast and lemons. Leicester are 2 0 down. Oh dear, that's a shame. <clears throat> I've been looking at um, Tesco's for their. I mean, elderflower, it, it does make a good. And what you can also do is. You could do elderflower, but then you could also get some ginger root, chop a bit of ginger root up and boil both the elderflower and the ginger root. Chuck it into, you know, your lukewarm water that you've already done your sugar and whatnot in. Chuck it in that and do an elderflower and ginger. And I think that would work out really well. You don't like elderflower ginger. <laughs> See, I love ginger. Uh, an elderflower and ginger would be interesting for me. There's still so much I want to try. I do like ginger, I don't know what it is. Just like ginger. Although I like butterscotch, cherry and um, plum as well. I've done rhubarb and ginger. Very nice. Favourite I'm red or white? These days, red. Yes, I'd say Malbec is my wine of choice. And uh, good evening. Is that tea wines? Blackberry vodka. Good evening. Oh, nearly spilt the glass again. Not even drunk as well. That's the sad thing about it. 
yeah i do like a nice malbec to be fair no no i sent him an email and um he didn't even reply so i didn't want to push it you know um maybe he's having time off as well i know he went for his jab I know he went for his jab and um, he was coming off the beer before his jab and after his jab. And then I emailed him to see if he was everything was okay, you know, a bit of courteous. And he never messaged me back. So I don't know whether the email got through. Good evening. I've not had wine for years. Bless you. you. need to get yourself some homebrew wine. It's good stuff. This isn't homebrew, obviously, but... No worries, mate. A big glass of Rioja. Ah, what's your favourite Rioja then? Uh, as long as if it's supermarket one. Oh, wine and cheese. Red wine and cheese. Or port and cheese, to be honest. Port and Stilton. A match made in heaven. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you can't beat Stilton and Danish Blue and them sort of cheeses with... Uh, a good port or, or a wine even a red wine steak oh. nothing better than the wine uh, you know having a steak on the barbecue with a glass of red wine nothing no I, we always have a cheese board or we'll always have a cheese board when we go when we go to restaurants and we're having it nice <laughs> You've never tried Stilton cheese. It is a good cheese, yeah. Whether it's your, whether it's for you or not, that's another thing. Uh, the best thing to do is buy a very small block of it from a supermarket and try. You know, if you don't like Stilton cheese, if you don't like blue cheeses, you probably won't like Stilton. But it is nice. I mean. Stilton cheese grated over over some red hot French fries. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now that is gorgeous. You know, I had it the other week. Uh, if you want to see, there's a review, <coughs> there's a video. But um, you don't like cheese? Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, the strong flavours. Stilton cheese over a taller Viocca. Ah, I remember, I remember taller Viocca very well. Yes, very nice. I do like the extra mature cheddar as well, to be fair. Brie, not so keen on brie. Very berry, tea wine, raspberry and peach, tea wine, pear and apple. 20 pence a bottle, you can't figure, you can't be out for the price though, can you? Chilli crisp with IPA. That's a good thing for your channel. You know, um... If you're good at matching your foods to your beers, that it does seem to be the way with a lot of channels where they match food with beers. Um, well, I don't know about matching food, but they certainly do beer, beer and food reviews. But if you're doing a channel where you're matching food to the beer you're drinking, that to me is an exceptional way to move your channel forward, personally. Yeah, Lidl's, yeah, they do some good cheeses. They're not too pricey as well. Sainsbury's and Marks and Spencer's and Rage Road, no. Too bloody pricey. The Brie de Me. I'm not really a Brie lover, to be fair. I mean, I've, I've had it plenty of times, but I'm not much of a Brie uh, lover. God no, no no no. Uh, one glass from each bottle, and then I'll I'll neck the rest in my leisure. Well, probably I'll probably take this tonight. Being being as it's a bottle of white, you can't leave white for too long. Brewbits Home Shop, Home Brew Shop. Ooh. I'm still I'm still thinking about doing cheese on toast, but Stilton cheese on toast. I reckon that'd be quite interesting. Something different, at least. 
you imagine it? Stilton cheese on toast. Uh, whether it would work or not, I'm not sure. Does it? Was it a double? Was it a double ginger IPA that you brewed? I was thinking about it yesterday, the other day, and I was thinking to myself, I've not seen him. I've not seen Andrew for a while, and then there's a few names that have disappeared. Yeah, I don't care when I drink stouts. I'll drink them whenever I like. I don't conform to anything. Um, I like a nice dark beer in the summer. I mean, obviously, the summer months are for lagers, ciders, golden and pale ales. But sometimes a nice stout. You look at the moment, every single every single company is releasing stouts at the moment. Imperials. All of them are around me in Nottingham. Still to not top of state. Bless you. All day long. Fish fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like fish fingers. Five fish fingers in this, on a slice of bread. You know, two slices of bread. Fish fingers in the middle. Jobs are good. Em. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mel melted cheese on ribeye. Oh, oh, oh. oh, lovely. Oh, you still at work? So Asda's got some of the new range in, Sainsbury's will have new range in, Morrison's have probably got some new beers as well apparently, it's getting very expensive to be a beer uh, fan or reviewer, you know, um, and then Lidl, beer festival next week, <laughs> it just goes on and on, I've never spent so much on beers in my life, I mean beer wall is absolutely battered at the moment. It uh, makes me wonder if I'm drinking too much, but hey -ho. Never worry, never worry about um, chatting to us all. You know, there's some very good people on this chat who've known you for a long time. And, uh, you know, chatting to people, you know, getting your concerns and, you know, sometimes just chatting to... Random people like us helps you get over whatever issues have gone off. You know, sometimes that break from reality. Reality can be a killer at times. Yeah, Death Star. Aren't we all? Yeah, it is good to talk. Do you know, this time last year, if I'd have known that there was all these people on the internet that were watching beer reviews and commenting, it would have, it would have helped me through a very tough time. Yeah, definitely tough. Best whiskey, Glenfiddich, eighteen years old. Oh, it's a toughie, isn't it? Because there was a lot. There's some good whiskies out there. My son-in-law, he's actually a whiskey connoisseur. He drinks a lot of different whiskies, and uh, yeah, with anxiety, it's a killer. And chatting to people, you know. Uh, <laughs> It helps me, it helped me in the toughest of times last year. And if, if I'd have known everyone, there was all these pe good people out there, it would have helped me so much more. Pity I wasn't doing live reviews this time last year. Although I'd probably got sacked because I would have gone on a bender. I'd have had a drink and really fucking ripped shit out of the twat who was being a cunt to me. But um, there you go. <clears throat> the gardening work's getting on great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to turn a corner. Um, Glenfiddichs. Yeah, I like Glenfiddichs. Uh, I did post a new video on my um, Instagram earlier today. Mm, mm. It's what it's all about, isn't it? I, I did some editing on um, some of my old reviews and um, see the Scottish the Scottish people in here tonight like Mr Bolton Wanderer he will know more about fine whiskers than, than, than I ever will I've not even heard of Belle Blair not even heard of that one the old fellow I used to work for he he was Scottish and uh, great bloke um, I 
and um, yeah, he liked his whiskies as well, bless him. Tad was in earlier, he was on his barbecue earlier, yeah, I did a random 40 minute live, I didn't mean to, I kind of left the uh, public on by mistake. So, 25 minutes, Jesus Christ. I need to neck this and get on the last one. I work at two hotels. So I was working on Nottingham's Park Estate, a hell of a job. job. Um, worst experience of my life, yeah. I would not wish what I worked in, the environment I worked in, on even my worst enemy, even the idiot I live across the road. <clears throat> Although maybe not. <laughs> but um, thank you you know I think we all help each other's you know um, um, you'd be surprised at the chatting the in in interaction good evening interaction helps everyone just chatting you know if you've had a day where you're on your own all day and uh, you've not spoke to no one and I was in that situation at work where I was in a bad workplace Oh, it's a woman. Oh, she's just a bitch. <laughs> Awful bitch. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that bloke at work, you know, it was an awful, awful workplace. Awful, awful, you know, from the moment, from the moment six o'clock came to on a Sunday evening, I was dreading going to work, dreading it. Coming home and hitting the, it, hitting the beer and wine. And whiskey. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I mean, now, I'm, I'm, I'm a gardener now. I'm, I'm back to doing normal gardening. But I'm, I'm creating... Um, it's very... It's not just doing mowing and edge trimming. I'm putting new flower beds in. I'm creating kitchen gardens. Um, growing lots and lots of plants. So it's very interesting. You know, from a gardening point of view. Never about the money. Not interested... I took a pay cut to go there because of what I needed to be away. And it's been good. Although I've not seen anybody for eight months, so. More steak tomorrow. Jobs are good. And, and uh, I mean, I can't wait for the weddings to start. Yeah. I'll be sat in the background watching, perving. And uh, <coughs> hope the wife's not watching. No, I'll be sat there watching the weddings, making sure everything goes okay. <laughs> but yeah, weddings. If, if anything in life, you know, getting out of a shit job and trying to get into a work, uh, a good job. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm always sober in the mornings. I'm, I'm never, never feeling rough in the mornings. Oh, I'll tell you what, growing... Don't you get me started. <laughs> growing veg and fruit, it's, it's really interesting. It is. I usually like rump steak as the best flavour, but for me it's always Malbec. I don't know why, I just like it. Yeah, you get all these idiots who try and tell you what you can and you can't drink. As long as you're not waking up in the morning at 8 o'clock, necking whiskey or wine or whatever. Oh, shit. Looks like my night is over. The food's here. Oh, no. I'll have to come back down after the food. Yeah, put some slug pellets down. So, looks like my... Uh, the food came quicker than what it should have bleeding done. Yeah, I might have to. I might, I might, I'll say I put it on pause. She won't know. Chinese, I think. Or it might be chip shop for all I know. So... Passion fruit, grapefruit, but all in all, a fantastic drop of wine. It was quick, wasn't it? I'll have to tell them I'll put it on pause. She won't know. 
she don't know that technology, so. It's a swam when you don't know, innit? So, I know I shed, I could have just ate while I was, while I was uh, doing pay-per-views. Um, for me, how oh, fantastic. Uh, the old range, if, if you want to ju jump into wines, Yellowtail, from the rosés to the whites, to the reds, to the sparklings, it's an exceptional brand of wine. Uh, for me, a good 4.4 all day long. Yeah, your wife, happy life, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Back in a bit, possibly. Cheers. That's just spoiling my beer reviews. She's going to get a bollock in there. Red card. <laughs> Cheers.